Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. It is great to have you with us. How are you and you and you and you? It's nice to see all those smiley faces. Well, I'm imagining that I see your smiley faces. You see mine, but I'm imagining I see you. Although when you do your comments, which I know you guys are so great, we've got a ton of comments already here built up before the show even started. I get to see your profile photos on uh, YouTube uh, at Gym Masters TV, which is our YouTube channel where we archive all of the episodes of the Gym Master Show Live, some 28 weeks of episodes, 180 episodes plus. Actually, it's more. I was looking at the counter. It said like over 200 plus episodes we have done on this show, the Gym Master Show Live. I cannot believe that. We're going to have to have a 200 episode party or something, but we've blown past that, which, you know, doing them day after day after day, you lose count of how many you've done. But Thanks to all of you who are watching from all around the world. Of course, we broadcast out of the greater New York City area in the United States of America between New York and Boston and the beautiful Southern New England coast. I am your host, Jim Masters. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we did start way back in the spring. Many of you know I do this work uh, professionally in my uh, day jobs, jobs different shows, hosting all these different things, radio, television, voiceovers, narrator, stage MC, presenter, um, you name it, journalist, actor, doing it all. And I've done it for years. And then we created this show uh, some 28 weeks ago, over 200 episodes ago. And it's amazing. And we have so much fun on this show. So much fun. Tomorrow night, Glenn Scarpelli is with us live He'll be on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, and that's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Glenn Scarpelli, of course, you know, child actor and one day at a time on CBS. That's right. He's also still a brilliant actor, singer. He owns a television station in Sedona, Arizona as well. He's very excited to be here. He's a great friend, and he's going to be a guest on our show uh, exclusively tomorrow. That's right. We have the incredible multi-platinum uh, musical genius really is what you got to call him. He's a recording artist. He's a musician. He's a songwriter. He's an Irish treasure. Phil Coulter is with us on Sunday, which is really exciting as well. That's going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which of course is Ireland, England, and uh, Scotland. That's this Sunday. That'll be on our YouTube channel exclusively as well. And so many more incredible people. Matt Steady, the incredible singer, Celtic blues singer and musician, is going to be with us Saturday here on the show. Uh, that's going to be really cool. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern um, and 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. It'll be 9 p.m. in uh, Europe, Ireland, Scotland, and England. He's in England. He lives in England. He's going to perform live for us. Uh, he's a Celtic blues musician. He's really cool. He's on Saturday night. Let's welcome everybody. First, I want to let you know we've got an amazing guest joining us tonight. He's a brilliant actor. Um, he's a writer. He's a producer. He's an artistic director, uh, television, film, stage, you name it. But he's also an artistic director for this really cool thing called Play Readings with Friends. His name is John L. Peacock. He's a terrific guy. and He's been sharing the links and tagging, and he's so excited to be here. And we are very excited to have him on our show exclusively as well. We're going to learn about his background and his passions and some really cool things that he's worked on and is currently working on as well. So happy to have him here. Let's welcome some of our loveties. I already told him, I instruct all the guests that they're entering the world of loveity. <laughs> the land of loveties, as you guys call it, and I'm Mr. Levity, and you guys are our loveties, the viewers, and they are inducted, our guests, into Levity Hall. <laughs> so they're always excited about that. Good to see everybody. Uh, Willie is in Holland. Hello, Jim. Nice to have you back. Also, your friends. Very welcome. We are going to enjoy the Jim Master Show again. Good to see you in beautiful Holland in the Netherlands. Nice to have you here. Tesla Bella. More cookies on the way, I heard. Hello, Jim. So good to be here in Lovety Hall, greeting you and your special guest, John, and all the Lovety's Tefs, who was a guest on our show a few weeks back. Wonderful uh, actress, comedian, and uh, voice artist as well. Nice to see you watching on the YouTube channel as well. Dante CD in San Diego. Tess is in Florida. Dante, whoosh, we take you to the West Coast now. He is in San Diego, and I love San Diego. I got to get back there. Hello, all Lovities. Nice to see you. Hi there, Mr. Lovity. Hope you are doing great. 
welcome our guest to the Lovity Show. <laughs> Love American style. Uh, this is another wonderful show. Thank you, Dante CD. You're watching in San Diego, and we really appreciate that. Mary Bishop, Pine Islands, Florida is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Time to relax and enjoy some great conversation. You got it. That's what we're about. That we're about so much more in this show. It's really incredible the things that occur on the show, especially when we are live. <laughs> As you know, anything can happen when you're live. Mary Bishop in Florida. Kathy Short is in Cleveland. Nice to see you, Kathy. Good evening, all from Cleveland. And Christine from North Carolina. Good evening, Jim and lovely friends. We welcome John to the show tonight. Another great conversation is about to begin in Lovely Hall. You got it. Absolutely. Good to see Kathy Short in Cleveland and Christine in North Carolina, USA. And Wozniak is here. Hi, Jim and all the lovelies. Happy Tuesday. Nice to see you, Anne, watching on the YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love you do that. So you can comment. So you can also click that notification bell so you don't miss anything as well. Our friend June is here. Hey, June. June Moon, good to see you watching in New York City, my fabulous friend. Hope you're doing well. Watching on YouTube. Tulips from Willie. Nice there. I love that from Holland. Merlin is here as well. Hey there, Jim and all lovelies. I love your profile photo of that uh, cutie you've got there, Merlin. Merlin is in Intercap, Ontario, Canada, and we're happy to have her watching tonight. Hi, Jim, John, and all lovelies. Mary Bishop, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Marsha Murphy Watson is here in Lovety Hall tonight. Thank you, Marsha, for being here. So is Bernadette. Hey, Jim, and all the Loveties. Nice to see you, Bernadette. And Harriskin from Southern California. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. You too, as well, Anne in SoCal, Sherry Show Online. Hello, Mr. Lovety and all the Loveties everywhere. So happy to be tuning in from West Central Ohio, USA. Juanita is here from South Africa. We love when Juanita is tuned in. Thank you very much for joining us live and direct from South Africa. That beautiful picture of you and your lovely daughter. Hello to you as well. Flower Power is here. Jen is Zen. Fantastic. Good to have you with us tonight, Jen, from Allentown, Pennsylvania. She's always Zen when she hears our theme song in the beginning. She wiggles uh, in her bed or she dances in her living room. And I'm sure she did that when the Gym Masters Singers and Orchestra started uh, kicking off the theme song. Nice to see you, Flower Power and Wozniak. Lots of smiles. Linda O'Dell from Florida. Good evening, Mr. Lovety. Good evening, Loveties. Love having you here, Linda. Hope you're doing well. And uh, we send you lots of Lovety here from the show. And uh, everybody's greeting everybody. Hello, friends. Bernadette. It's nice to see everybody and all the people that discover us. You know, they check out the show while it's live. Viewers that watch that don't comment are watching right now. So anybody that's not commenting, you don't have to comment to watch our show uh, or to participate. Just enjoy it. So those that are watching that aren't commenting, we say hello to you as well, everybody. Hi, Jim, and hope you had a great day. We sure have, and it's continuing that way. Hi, everyone. Kathleen Walker in New York City, the Queen of Queens. And welcome, John, to Lovely Hall. So excited you're joining us this evening. Uh, love your hat and the long hair looking awesome. This hair hasn't been cut since everything began in March. It's the longest it's been in several years. <laughs> well, I'm able to do all the daily radio shows out of the house from the home studio. That's cool. That's what's helped. And there, when I was on a TV shoot a couple of days ago in the studio, we were able to pin it back almost like a ponytail type thing, pin it back so it had the clean cut look because it was a news segment that we were doing. So the tricks, the tricks of the trade, right? Chris is here, glad to be able to join. Long time play readings, reader collaborator. Chris, good to see you here. Ah, oh, yeah, another Chris is here. Chris from uh, Comber in Ireland there, Belfast area, Northern Ireland. Hello all, I've brought virtual pizza. Hey, I love that screen cream army. Just wanna let you know, one of Ireland's famous are coming here Phil Coulter is going to be here live on Sunday on our YouTube channel. Uh, Chris, good to have you here. Marilyn is here as well. Hi, Jim and all our lovelies. Burr in Kansas. Finished a bowl of chili, so that means it's cold in Kansas, huh? And uh, in Wichita. Avril is here from the United Kingdom in Hampshire in England. Hi, Jim and all the lovelies. Hope you had a good day. We sure did. Our guest is from England on Saturday, Avril. That's Matt Steady, Celtic blues musician and singer, is going to be on our YouTube channel Saturday. That'll be, it's going to be 9 p.m. your time, so it'll be earlier. It'll be uh, 4 p.m. our time here. 
And good evening, John. You're a lovety now. Yes, <laughs> he sure is. And I just want to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he's a really cool guy. He's very, very creative and he's very, very talented. And we have some things to also show you as well. This is a cool shot. Isn't that a cool shot? I tell you, he looks like he should be in like an old spice commercial or he should be like on a, I don't know, you know, like chamber of commerce for ireland or scotland or something it's just got that look <laughs> in that shot i just want to tell you again a little bit about him he really is uh, a cool guy and he's uh, very very talented he's an actor writer director founder founding artistic director of play readings with friends a theater company dedicated to the development of new works john earned his uh, bachelor of arts in acting from arizona state university in his home state studying under co-founding artistic director of Circle Rep Theater Company, Marshall W. Mason. And this mentorship led John to pursue the arts in New York City. They, uh, then he earned his BFA in creative writing. And this artistic path has most recently led John to be commissioned to write plays for the Pathos Theater of Munich for their 2021-2022 season. That's exciting. John's company, Play Readings with Friends, has been reading new works and developing plays for over eight years in their newest production, Zoom, at the end of November, it's going to be a Zoom production, the online production of a new play entitled Star Chamber. That's going to be cool. And uh, that's imagining how William Shakespeare reacted to his plays being used for a rebellious uprising against Queen Elizabeth I. And it'll be a benefit outreach community for New York City Shakespeare Forum, which brings free arts education to the underserved youth of New York. That's really, really cool. Um, and he's got a list of credits that go on in, in film and television and commercials and all kinds of different things. He's a SAG after actor as well. And let's bring him live and direct from New York City, good old Brooklyn. Here he is, John L. Peacock. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me tonight. My pleasure. No, I was a little nervous that maybe with the last name Peacock, you would have uh, been thinking that you were going to be on NBC tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I the first time I saw Thirty Rock was a what is a beautiful occasion. I tell you, that's <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, how have you been? You and I were chatting a little bit in the beginning. You know, we're all adjusting to everything that's going on. And, you know, we're trying to pivot. We're trying to keep things moving forward. We're trying to be uh, positive and inspirational and, and creative, keep those creative juices flowing. How have you been, my friend? And, and what are some of the things that you've been doing to stay connected and creative during all of this crazy year? Well, the first thing that uh, kind of came out of uh, an immediate necessity, I was going to have a, a reading with my company, Play Readings with Friends, um, in downtown Brooklyn at our Black Box Theater when everything started to shut down. And so it was basically happening that same week. And we decided, well, we'll just move this reading onto Zoom. Uh, and that very first week, I think it was about the, the 18th of March, so shortly after New York shut down, we had that reading. And from that moment on, once a week, we decided to do a, a weekly online reading of, of new works. Our normal format was monthly in person at the Black Box Theater in Brooklyn, but uh, it caught on so quickly and playwrights immediately um, uh, saw the opportunity. And like uh, much like your show, being able to go every day because people have that need and desire to connect and to, and to see each other and to be seen. Um, the, such a beautiful community has come out of this new phase of, of the company and, and the readings. That is fantastic. How did you get started early on, you know, in your youth? We all have different things when we look back that were sort of nuggets of inspiration that sort of pointed us in the direction uh, to, well, we're lucky to be doing things that we love. Some people do have desires when they're a child to do something and then life takes them in a different path and sometimes they're able to circle back and do what they wanted to do. A lot of people during this period where we've had this big global pause have been reevaluating their lives and saying, you know what, I've been doing this all my life, but now I think I wanna do what makes me happy or I wanna follow my heart, follow my passion. There's been a lot of that happening, which is a beautiful thing for, for people's hearts, minds, and souls. But for you, uh, did, you or, did you know early on, this is what you wanted to do and you followed that path. Um, who was John as a kid? Well, my very first love was actually physics. I, uh, uh, Albert Einstein was my childhood hero, and I literally wanted to be Albert Einstein when I grew up. Uh, the most I got was the hair, which is fortunate. Uh, but uh, 
I quickly learned that um, all he was doing was being paid to think and imagine and uh, thinking about riding a surfboard, the speed of light. And right. that's what fascinated me about his form of physics. But I realized I couldn't get paid in that way. And uh, so I found such a beautiful um, uh, creative outlet in the world of acting very early on in high school. And I'm the youngest of six. All my brothers and sisters were very into sports, uh, very into traditional uh, career pathways. And I said, Mom, I want to go into acting. She's like, oh. <laughs> But fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, she was supportive of this weird uh, sixth child, uh, the only redhead in the family. And uh, she, she said yes and uh, gave, gave her all uh, to a kid that she had no idea why they wanted to do that. And my move to New York, my, my getting my undergraduate degree in acting, all of those were very big surprises and very hard on, on my family overall. But really, so, so much support came from them and a core base of friends that um, I was able to actually pursue what I wanted in so many different ways and and uh, take the detours that I needed to do to, to continue my love and my passion of the arts. See that's, and, and I'm sure that as that developed and things moved forward for you, uh, the, your mother and your family were like, gee, you know, you, you did, Pick the right avenue. You're you're doing what you love, and it, and it's you know you're you're expressing your love for and passion for it as well, right? Oh yeah, my mom's become my biggest uh, um, super fan, my biggest cheerleader, uh, along with you know many core supporters. But um, when I think a big big thing that uh, everyone was able to say, hey, he's actually doing some great things. That's a, that's a being long standing. Is I had a short uh, a small part in. Um, a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, uh, the recent Tom Hanks film. And yes. um, I heard what, from many people. What oh, was the part? Because we saw, I saw that. What was the part? So I was the uh, the audio engineer on the set of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Very, very small little thing. A couple of lines, but uh, a really nice moment. Uh, about 20 minutes in when we first see the set of Mr. Rogers, which we were in the original studio. It was a really beautiful experience overall. WQED we in Pittsburgh. 40 yes. years he did it. Yes. Yeah, and we were able to be in that same studio and, and just set, get a feel. The, the set is still there, isn't it? Or did they bring it to the Smithsonian? Not the Smithsonian, the Heinz uh, Museum, History Museum in Pittsburgh. So in it Pittsburgh. stayed local. Yeah, and I and where her, our hotel was only a block away, so I was able to see the the original set while being in the original studio, uh, filming in a replica, uh, all in twenty four hours. It was wow. such an amazing experience. Yeah, but, it had it had to be. I mean, what? Yeah. I, I've certainly th on public television have been co have co hosted many a pledge drive in support of Mister Rogers and Sesame Street and all the you know Arthur Barney. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? What was the feeling for you? knowing about Fred Rogers, the incredible Fred Rogers, yeah. um, and the love people have, and this resurgence of love. I think because we've been so divided and there's so much vitriol and there's so much stuff out there, people are craving for that type of thing, that, that warm you know, person who's empathetic and caring and says, okay, it's all right, and reassuring. And you know, growing up with Mr. Rogers, what was yeah. it? What was it like being a part of that project and being in that studio in Pittsburgh, WQED, where you know that show was filmed? It was once in a lifetime experience. I, I yeah. did grow up with him. Um, yeah, my older brother, at 20 years older than me, grew up with him. You know, he had a 40 year span. So yeah. there's so many generations that did. And the director uh, brought in uh, his original producer, uh, so many people who knew him so closely. And so the stories about him, and, and the energy, we got to feel Fred Rogers for a couple yeah. of days um, uh, in those, those shoots. And it was really, like I said, a once in a lifetime experience. It was so beautiful. Mm. So that's really cool. That was really cool. Has that led to other things in film for you? Other opportunities beyond that opportunity? That was happening, you know, that, that came out about three months before the shutdown. So there were definitely uh, um, a lot of auditions coming in and things yeah. starting, but uh, such a huge break. And when that break happened, like you said, um, I, I not, didn't reevaluate because film is definitely a, a major passion of mine. But I saw that I could continue with this theatrical community where so many communities just shut down for a while. Yeah, and they just, yeah. you know, and they're starting to try to do individual online performances or this and that. But there's not really so much of a community. And I saw so many people, uh, um, uh, um, you know, agreeing with that, uh, uh, being drawn to it and such. You know, we, we had 200 and some odd members right before the, the pandemic. And we're currently at 700 and something. 
So mm. just to see that influx of people and the people who come back and say, thank you so much uh, oh, yeah. you know, for these experiences, I wanted to make sure to focus on that and get it out each week and just that, um, you know, continue that positive thing. And I think that's a that's the biggest effect that that filming had on me is the, that remembrance of Fred Rogers energy of all positive and building each other up and community. And that's what I wanted to move forward with. I mean, I think a lot of people, when they watch the recent movies and PBS documentaries and different things on Fred, uh, they didn't realize how involved in the show he was with the creation of all the characters and doing the voices of, you know, the owl and all the different, you know, the King Friday. The King, I mean, yep. he, he did the puppets. He created the puppets, voiced the puppets. I mean, he was so involved in every aspect because there was such a educational uh, bent to the show that was very important. It wasn't just a time filler. It was supposed to be educational. And uh, I mean, some of the topics that were talked about too, as far as, far as having children deal with various aspects of life. I think one of the and, first, uh, yeah. death, divorce, all these different things, it, really amazing. So that that's fantastic. Before all of that, what would you say would, would be an early break for you you know, in the early years, maybe when you were going to college or in high school, were there some productions and things that you were involved in that sort of opened the doors slightly and then the doors started opening more and more for you? Uh, yes, uh, a, a major um, influence early on uh, was an old professor of mine, Dr. Cray Wilson, who actually just passed a, a couple months ago. Um, uh, not of COVID, but um, an older man and had a full lo a life, but he influenced me into Shakespeare. And um, that brought a new path in, in my theatrical uh, um, career and, and passion uh, that has been there 100% ever since. That led me to um, audition shortly after college uh, for the, uh, Air, um, uh, the Redland Shakespeare Festival of Southern California. That, that experience and the, I, I, I was Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet. And that was mm. really the first major dream role uh, that I was fulfilling one of those bucket roles. And yeah. that led into uh, a lifelong uh, career of, of Shakespeare. Um, the biggest uh, um, uh, platform I've ever been on was uh, the uh, New York Shakespeare in the Park uh, with the public theater. Oh, yeah. I was an ensemble member at the Julius Sh uh, Caesar production of 2017. Um, that right. got a lot of attention. Um, it was actually internationally talked about for a couple of weeks, which was very weird and, and yeah. surreal to be a part of uh, the most talked about play in the world for, for a short amount of time. Um, but yeah, that, that early, uh, I, so Cray Wilson directed me in, uh, as Demetrius in A Midsummer Night's Dream, and that was my first Shakespeare play. And that, and how he brought uh, me and, and so many people into into Shakespeare, and, and the understanding of how modern and um, um, uh, informative and relevant it is today, uh, led me to uh, pursue uh, a certain amount of things, which led into Mercutio and and Bottom shortly thereafter, also with Redlands, and then uh, into a life, uh, you know, a path uh, in New York and and beyond. Um, yeah. Have you done voiceover work? You must. Uh, Tom, yeah. Because uh, you have a lower, I've done a lot of voiceover work too, but you have a lower, you know, register there. And I'm sure you've done a lot of voiceover work, narration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, not uh, audiobooks. I have a yeah. couple of friends who say yes. A couple of friends are like, ooh, it's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, some voiceover work and, and, um, uh, it's been a lot of fun with that. Actually, we just, uh, most recently did an audiobook. Uh, but it wasn't the narrate, one person narrates and does everything. The, the uh, uh, author wanted it to be alive and like an audio play. Okay, uh, yeah. So I was, I was a character within this audio book, one of the major characters of a, of a book called uh, The Naked Truth. Um, uh, so that's, that's going to be fun when it comes out. That's a, that was a really fun project. When is that due out? Do you know? Have they said? 
No, we just finished uh, the recording of it. And so I would expect that the post uh, production of that recording, just editing all those many, many voices together. It's not a standard audio book, obviously. So it's going to be a little bit longer. So I, I don't know if she's given a date, so I don't even want to guess on it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're just when it comes and they tell you, then you announce it. Then I'll definitely announce it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, want to, I, met, I mentioned that the show is filled with lots of lovity. And I want to show you some of the welcomes coming in here. Sherry Schoenlein, welcome, John, to Lovity Hall. So excited you're joining us this evening from Sherry. Really, really nice. And a uh, bunch more here. This is really nice to see all this. Merlin, Canada. Uh, hello, John. Welcome to Lovity Hall. Welcoming you as well. Thank June, you for the course. induction. Looking <laughs> forward to tonight. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have said, gee, I'll take it. We had uh, Jamie DeRoy on last night and she was like, Lovity Hall, sign me up. I want to be in it. I'm, I want, I love it. So it was awesome to have her do that too. Welcome, John, to Lovity Hall. We hope you enjoy your time here from uh, Bernadette. Thank you, Bernadette. Yeah, you got a lot. Uh, Marla Porter says hi from Austin, Texas. Nice to see you, Marla. Welcome on Howdy the back. Uh, yeah, welcome on YouTube there, Jim Masters TV. Uh, friend of John, hello. Uh, a door number three. Well, th uh, hello, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Secret code, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll translate that later, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alana Rader, hello uh, from New York City, long time play readings with friends, collaborator and actor here. Thank you, Elena, Alana, for watching. Uh, yeah. Elena, Elena, yeah, she's wonderful. She's uh, uh, actually, she's a partner. She is my partner. So she's uh, been uh, very helpful with play readings and with uh, keeping me sane throughout all these money months. <laughs> yeah, and when you say partner, you mean the partner. <laughs> she, she is my life partner, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, See? Oh, up. there it is. Are we quick on the show or what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, Valentine's party at the McKittrick Hotel of, of New York City, which, which threw some amazing uh, uh, Valentine's, Halloween, and New Year's parties, um, and also hosted Sleep No More, the, uh, the off-Broadway show for, for several years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's nice to have her here. And John's doing a great job, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Chris is here as well. Glad to be able to join longtime play readings reader, collaborator, Chris Pesur, and uh, love that. And let's see, Avril is here. She says hello from England, from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Avril. And uh, Linda O'Dell, who's in Florida. Good evening, John. You're a lovity now. <laughs> greetings, <laughs> greetings from Bruce Bryant in California. We love that, uh, from the LA area. And let's see. Jeanette says, nice pick, John, that picture that I was showing in the beginning, uh, where I said you could be on the old Spice ads or Scotland, Ireland Travel Tourism Bureau. Uh, Jeanette, thank you very much. Juanita, who's in South Africa, welcome to the show, John. Thank you. All the way from beautiful South Africa. Uh, Anne Wozniak, welcome, John. Love the hair color and curls. Well, much like Jim, uh, this has not been cut since uh, since the shutdown, so it is a bit longer um, than it normally has been in the past couple of years. So I, I've been appreciating it. It's it's one of those times where we can get away with it, right? Exactly. There's a lot of TV hosts, especially who haven't their hair hasn't been cut, uh, and it's just growing. And some looks actually good long a little bit longer, you know. Yeah, um, Willie becoming a new appreciation for that. It's becoming a new, right, exactly. Willie is in uh, the Netherlands, in Holland, uh, around the Amsterdam area. She says, hello, John. Welcome to the Gym Master Show. Best show ever. Thank you, Willie. And she's welcoming you. Willie, thank uh, you. Uh, Amsterdam is one of my favorite cities in the world. The energy of the people there are, are un unmatched, very unique, and very beautiful. And the cheese, chocolate, and beer are pretty good, too. <laughs> and, the, and the tulips are, are, are gorgeous as well. Yeah, <laughs> they sure are. Mary Bishop says, welcome, John, all the way Yo. from Florida, uh, New York City. Hi, Kathleen. Uh, hi, John. Welcome. Hi. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Welcome, John, to Lovety Hall. Hey. Merlin said in Canada says, wow, what a voice. Thank you so much, Merlin. Northern Ireland is represented. Chris says, welcome to the show, John. We love it. Uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania and Flower Power, Jenna Zen. She says, hey, John. Uh, Allentown. I know. Kathy, this is like, this is your life, huh? Kathy, yeah. Sh <laughs> Kathy Short, welcome, John, to the land of loveities. You. you have a deep baritone voice. Very nice. 
Thank you. <laughs> he said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see him in the new Mr. Clean commercials. It's going to be Mr. Clean <laughs> with the deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John, to the uh, Jim Master Show Live. You are now a lovely, great you could join us tonight. Fantastic. Love that tone. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Ah. <laughs> Was that a high R or a low R? <laughs> right. <laughs> or, or alto R. Uh, welcome, John. Glad you're joining the best talk show on the planet. Wow. My Nate's, how do we print that out? Can we print that one out and put it on the billboards on the highways? <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Anne and SoCal. I uh, love that. And uh, more coming in here. Let's see. Uh, welcome all lovelies and John Peacock from Christopher Joseph, who's in Ohio. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank I you. know. In Ireland and uh, UK, they didn't get uh, Mr. Rogers. It was really a PBS American. We were blessed here in America to have it. Uh, Francis is saying hello as well to all of us and to you as well. Thank you. And uh, do you sing? I do. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, singer. bass baritone. Yes. <laughs> you, you named it. That's it, right? Um, what a terrific movie to be a part of, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. It was touching and special. Uh, I think one of the last that she saw in North Carolina before the pandemic. Yeah, we saw it over the holidays. We were in Florida with the family, at, visiting family for the holidays, and we went and saw it in Florida. Everybody loved the movie. Yeah. Uh, it really was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was something to be a part of. It was, yeah. I'm, I'm completely, uh, eternally grateful and honored. That it, yeah. it's something that I can never. They, they can't take that away from me, as they say, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, June is here as well. She says hello. Hey, June. Thank you for the connection, June. Linda says, uh, join the f John. Feel the lovely love. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, Chris in Northern Ireland said, would you like some virtual pizza? I'm surprised you haven't asked yet. Of course I would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tess Labella is welcoming Alana to the show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Chris says, that was quite an event on Valentine's, the picture we uh, showed with you and I, Alina. I believe he and his lovely fiance, who's pictured there, Vanessa, were also there. Yeah. Tess Labella says, John, you're a lovety. I'm in. Gene says, hey, John, I'm here representing the the Sidons from Brooklyn. The Siddons, yes. Siddons from Brooklyn. Wow. Uh, Gene Sidden is actually another uh, early influence of mine. Her her uh, son, Ian Sidden, uh, who took that beautiful picture that you were talking about, the the uh, the Old Spice uh, picture. Right. <laughs> uh, a, a amazing photographer, but also an opera singer in Germany. And uh, opera has opened back up, so he's he's back to work out there. But wow. uh, his mom was a major uh, supporter of of us in high school, and uh, uh, one who pushed me personally in in great ways. And she's a a, a fantastic playwright who's been uh, continually a part of play readings with friends as a playwright and an actor. Oh, that's terrific. We'll have to maybe get the, both of them on the show. Yeah, I, actually, a friend of mine, Emmett O'Hanlon, who was part of Celtic Thunder. He, when he left Celtic Thunder, he was with the Lyric Opera uh, in Chicago and then was just in Germany uh, with the opera there. And uh, he just came, he's coming back in December because he's going to be a guest on the show. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to that. But, and his mom owns a restaurant actually in the Lower East Side in Manhattan. Um, he said that there's a lockdown situation in Germany, and that's one of the reasons why he's coming back in, in December or coming back for the holidays because of the lockdown that's going on a little bit, which is it's happening big time in Europe. I know Ireland so is uh, France. I know has gotten a bit of level a hit. five. Yeah, level yeah. five. Uh, Sherry says, uh, John, you and Elena are both loveties now. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Oh, what a cool name, Z Look, Z Look. So great to see you, a love from the Arizona Idaho family. I'm guessing those uh, are the. Uh... So Z is the nickname of my sister, who has an even uh, greater name. Her name is Goldie, Goldie Peacock. Uh, so what a Goldie, cool. <laughs> she she was like, how can I get a better name than Goldie? Oh, I know Z. Uh, so yeah, um, she, thank you very much for the shout she's out. She's got Z look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, people think I made my name up too, Jim Masters. They're like, your name isn't Jim Masters. It's probably Harvey Lopperwitz or something. I'm like, no, it's actually Jim Masters. It's James and I'm the fifth. And it goes back, you know, to Europe and everything. But they think because I work on TV and radio that I made that name up. You know, people would always change their names or pick a name. And your name, it really isn't Jim Masters. And I'm like, that, yeah, it is. I, I tell people I had to earn that name through third grade. Peacock wasn't the best last name to have, but you know what? It ended up being a little bit better later down the road. So no, well, I didn't pick it. I earned it. Hey, <laughs> birds of a feather. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mateo Esposito is here. Hey, John, good to see you. He is a fantastic playwright out of the Toronto area in Canada. Oh, really? um, Mateo, great to see you. Thank you for the shout out. Yeah. Uh, he, he has uh, written a, a beautiful play about um, uh, autism uh, called um, uh, Sorting It Out. And as an autistic playwright, um, he wanted to uh, bring more information and more um, uh, just knowledge about um, autism and, and the autistic uh, uh, community and, and stigmas behind it with this gorgeous play that uh, when theater starts coming back to New York, we're hoping to have a, a school uh, tour with it. And so uh, really wonderful playwright. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I've emceed uh, this uh, spectacular concert event each year. This year, obviously, a little different. It's at Carnegie Hall, and uh, Carnegie Hall is pretty much closed. They're doing yeah. virtual. But um, it's called an American uh, Christmas Carol, and it's with Tim Janis, the composers, a friend of mine for years. I interviewed him on public television. And he brings in all these great artists and performers from television, Broadway, film, and uh, a full orchestra and a youth choir and this whole bit and celebrities and all. And... Uh, it's a Carnegie Hall each year in December, but it benefits actress Kate Winslet's um, charitable foundation, which is the Golden Hat Foundation, which is for autism research. That's what I wonder. wonder. There might be, they might like to know that he's doing that, the play, and maybe the elements of that, uh, some combination there as well. I'd cool. love to connect you. If, if, you know, we'll talk about that later for sure. Anybody that's watching on the YouTube channel right now, we would love it if you subscribe, Jim Masters TV right there. You've got the uh, address, everybody watching on uh, YouTube. That's where we archive all the episodes. Let's do a cheers, we welcome you too. Cheers. There you go. Oh, I like that cup, what does it say on the front there? It is. Um... Be your own president. <laughs> <laughs> How apropos. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like that coat. Where did that it, come from? Was it a gift? Uh, it, it was uh, um, um, Stephen Colbert. Uh, it, uh, and uh, the proceeds went to uh, a couple of uh, different positive organizations. So oh, it was cool. uh, something he did about uh, three months ago. And and I, I wanted cool. to wanted to help and and love that cup and I've been enjoying yeah. it ever since. I'm a cup mug guy too myself, and I don't know how I missed that one. But this here, this uh, this is a cool one. It looks like a denim pocket. Yeah. Doesn't like a denim jean. Oh yeah. Uh, this my that's mother great. made this actually. Oh, uh, that's so wonderful. During a period uh, years back when she was into ceramics and everything, uh, she made one for dad, my sister, myself, for her. And uh, yeah, really cool. So we've got some hot chocolate in here. Perfect, perfect. Mm. What's in yours? <laughs> What's in your wallet? Mostly water, <laughs> mostly water. Yeah. Mostly water. <laughs> the, yes, the, the rest is melted ice. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like, I'm gonna, can I write that, steal that? Yeah. Mostly water. Which is the ice that melted. <laughs> so it's, you know, truth in advertising. Yeah. Um, more cool stuff. Uh, let's have a commercial for play readings with friends. Uh, Mateo, again, we heard from. Uh, I can write, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chris says, Mateo's play was wonderful and touching. Very much looking forward to working on it again. Anne in California says, my son has autism. Hey, we would love to see this play. So that's beautiful as well. Yeah, well, I'll get the information, yeah. Anne, and you'll, you know, you guys can keep me posted. And, and yeah. if Mateo wants to come on as a guest, we can do that too and have you both on. Or uh, Pete says, hello to John and Jim sending love from the Thai. The Thai. Um, hmm. I, I know he's in uh, Southern California. That's the Inland Empire, but. Mm, yeah. The oh, maybe the Inland Empire. Inland Empire. Yes. We found it. <laughs> see? See? We were fit to be tied. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
That's cool. That's cool. It's nice just to see some of these uh, wonderful things here. Yeah. And Merlin, uh, Merlin says, way to go, Mateo. Hope this stuff is over. Yeah, the COVID and everything. And uh, Lena and one of uh, our resident playwrights. Yep, yep. absolutely. Uh, Linda, love coffee mugs, love collecting them. Just a hobby of mine. And way to go, Mr. Masters. Great mug, Jim. I used to go to ceramics also. So much fun. Absolutely. Cool stuff when it's, uh, you know, family made. So uh, so these terrific opportunities that you've had, um, I mean, you've really dipped your feet into a lot of different things. I mentioned that sort of in the introduction. Um, how did you get into specifically and what do you prefer more do you prefer prefer being the performer or behind the scenes making the magic that way john well uh up until COVID, i would say that my main passion in the theater was was being the performer was being given the role um conceptualizing it um uh, interpreting it and being that interpretive live artist or or film artist uh, that i'd been doing for so long I have my master's in creative writing. I had been writing uh, plays and, and uh, you know books and other things uh, for for a while, but that very much felt in a secondary way for me for a bit. Um, this company started to bring out any kind of backstage um, experience um, that I'd had pre-COVID. I had produced a couple of uh, works through play readings. I had directed a couple of the, the those works that I produce and brought in directors for other ones. Uh, so that I was dipping my toe into, but very yeah. much still consider myself a hundred percent actor first. Since the the shutdown, um, I the first one of the first things I did was um, uh, finish a, a full length play that I had been writing on uh, uh, for four years, and that was a huge like just somewhat cathartic, but also somewhat understanding of of my passion for for the writing, um, and. Since then, all these uh, play readings, I usually do not uh, act in them. I usually bring in actors. Um, and so that curating and that, um, um, you know, working on the development, working on the, the workshopping aspect of the, of the plays uh, has brought in so much of that backstage um, and behind the scenes uh, passion that I've had for a long time. Uh, or, or not that, that, that I, it, not I've had for a long time. I've had for a short period, but it's grown so much in that short period. Right. And uh, most recently, I uh, just kind of fell into uh, a connection with a theater company out in Munich, Germany, that um, that has commissioned me to write two uh, one act plays. Uh, one of them has been completed with a co writer, uh, uh, Christopher Marshall, uh, and the other one I'm I'm finishing up on my own. And those are going to be produced and and developed and and uh, performed uh, in the uh, September of 2021. And mm. so there's so much, and I'm so excited about it. And it's such a d different field than acting has ever brought me. So there's so much of this um, writing, producing, curating, and directing that wasn't as available to me before. That has just brought a, a new um, creative spark. Uh, a lot of inspiration and a lot of passion that hasn't been the same as my acting passion. So I can't really say anymore. You know, five months yeah. ago, even I would have said, "Oh, it's still acting first, and I write and I direct, and and I got this company, and it, we're having a lot of fun with it. And it's a good community." But now it's I care so much about this community. I I want so much for for these other actors and these writers and these artists, and um, I find so much of my passion in the writing world as. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't hundred percent there. So it's really, it's up in the air. I, I'm, I'm passionate in all of these ways, very, very differently, but very equally. So the performer, but also uh, play readings with friends. How did that develop? Tell us about that. That's cool. Uh, about, oh, over, over 10 years ago, or roughly 10 years ago, uh, I got together with a group of friends and we read plays. And we literally, it was a uh, once a month-ish, uh, to, uh, work, you know, published plays we would grab from the drama uh, bookshop or something uh, and get together, eat pizza, drink wine, and read uh, great plays, um, classics or moderns. And about eight years ago, that started to shift um, into, well, I, I have a couple playwright friends, so let's, let's read their plays. And that, that passion, like the, the immediate uh, feedback that came out of that said, oh, this is, this is something we should do. 
Um, uh, my master's is from Long Island University in Brooklyn. And though it's in creative writing, I had a connection to the theater company or the theater uh, department. And the master's the, was where, what'd you say? The master's? Uh, Long, Long Island University in Brooklyn uh, in, in creative writing. Post. Hey, yeah. It's a beautiful campus. Uh, yeah, yeah, more beautiful yeah. than Brooklyn, but Brooklyn's nice too. Post, yeah, <laughs> Long Island. Yeah, hey. yeah. We're say we're cousins. I know. Say? So many connections. One degree so, of separation. <laughs> so the theater, the theater uh, uh, director there gave, uh, you know, essentially said, here, here's a black box for you to use. If we're not doing classes or productions in it, uh, do this wonderful thing. And that gave us a home that led us to be able to expand this this concept of developing works, of reading plays out and, and having these workshops that led into actual productions over the past eight years. Um, so it's just been slowly building. And now with COVID, the, the community has spread beyond New York region into such a beautiful way that we are now able to do these online productions and have this much larger community and and bring so many more people together than we could have ever imagined that is incredible uh what do you see as the future of this this is because it's so unique it's really cool we're we're working towards uh not-for-profit status that was something that we were uh, like basically about to put paperwork in but with COVID, it it changed things and we wanted to make sure that we're still serving what the the current uh need is because right. that has changed that has shifted um but you know we still see when, when we go back to in-person, we still want to have that online aspect so that our greater community beyond New York are still able to actually be fully involved. Uh, so we might have readers that are set up on, on uh, computer screens in the room, in the black box with other live readers, and then have an audience cam so that people can really have that full experience. So with that, it, it, we're seeing um, you know, the productions that we're doing moving forward into uh, more um, uh, fully realized productions um, once we get back into the theater and and being more of a fully realized theater company with that not-for-profit set. Mm, that is really, really cool. It's pretty exciting, huh? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful community and it's been, you know, something to keep us connected even in these times. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I want to show a clip we have here. Oh, uh, looks like... Uh, Zednia asks, so what is this Star Chamber about? So that's that's the production coming up. If you want to uh, do the clip and then we can talk about that, or we could just jump into it now. That's up to you. You want to preface it? Uh, we have, yeah, which one is it? Is it Richard III? Is it Duke Orsino? Or is it Yes, I Didn't Breakfast? I, I do. I do. Uh, Richard, that was... Um, do Richard, yeah. The, the, so I was able to be the title role of uh, Richard III, the bloody hunchback king. Uh, the the bit largest, I mean, he, depending on if you're doing Folio or Quarto, he's as big as Hamlet, slightly bigger, slightly smaller. So, you know, right. one of the largest uh, uh, um, roles in the canon and definitely the, the biggest uh, physical struggle I'd ever had to do. I have um, a herniated disc, uh, which gives me back problems, and I as had to result? be a hunchback. No, 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 no. Uh, fortunately, I took care of myself and I stretched myself out after every performance, but it was having to work with that kind of um, physical uh, restrictions and um, uh, affect is essentially what I was putting on. Uh, you know, it was it was difficult, but uh, one of the greatest um, difficulties that I was able to come out triumphant on. Let's take a look at that right now. We'll be back and we'll chat more with our very special guest, John L. Peacock, right here on the Jim Baxter Show Live. Here we go. certain way of gaining, but I am in so far in blood that sin will pluck on sin. Dear Polly, pity falls not in this time. Is my name Tyrol? Jenny Lee's Tyrol. And your most obedient subject. Art thou in thee? Prove me, my gracious love. There is thou resolved to kill a friend of mine. I, my lord, but I have had killed two enemies. There thou hast it to the enemy, Tyrrell. I need those bastards in the tower. Let me have open means to come to them, and soon I'll rid you of the fear of them. Now sing sweet music, Park. Come in, Tyrrell. Go by the 
this token rise and lend thy ear. There is no more so. Say it is done, and I shall love thee and prefer thee to. I will dispatch thee straight. Yeah. When you look back, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. That was so, you had a good size audience there too. It looked like, you know, fell to the yeah. right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that was up in uh Kennebunk, Maine or Kennebunk Port, Maine. Sorry, there's two different cities. Oh, I don't yeah, know and you, and you learn that quickly when you go, right? It's Very beautiful, quickly. I was on a couple of TV shoots up there and it's absolutely beautiful and uh Algonquin, York, uh, Biddeford, Portland, that whole area of Southeast Maine is really a nice part of uh, northern New England. Do you, do you get up there often to do different things? The the York Theater is used a lot for production, and the Agonquit Theater is used a lot. Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, what uh, the, the other production company that I worked with is a little bit further up in Lewiston. So it's a oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your uh, sound, your audio went out. So it might be the mic. So you can hear me, right? You hear me, so everybody hears me. But your... Uh, can, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Somehow this might have uh, uh, cheesed out, so I'm going to take that off for now. Yeah, there was, a little, there was a little bit of a clicking. I don't know if... The, is your mic near your the chain around your neck? It might have been it. I was normally trying to. Do you want me to try to uh, plug it back in? See if it yeah, works. see if it. Yeah, see if it. Uh, I'll move that up to the side. The the wonders Perfect. of the internet, right? <laughs> the wonders of the internet. How is that? <laughs> How is that now? Actually, that's much better. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. Whatever you did, uh, you just kicked the computer underneath. That's all it yeah, takes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just a quick reboot. And by boot, I meant with my, my Doc Martens. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of great comments about what they just saw. Wow, what a look. Uh, claps from Mary and wow from Linda in Florida and Juanita in South Africa. Claps, claps, uh, claps. Chris Pesur, bravo, John. Uh, we can hear you now. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> they always help out when... Uh, Things happen. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting video clip, John, uh, and Wozniak. Uh, claps, 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 and uh, Marsha. Uh, Richard the Third has scoliosis. Just said right. scoliosis. So I, I, I was able to understand. Actually, uh, I, yeah. I have a slight scoliosis, which led to my herniated disc. So I, I can relate in a little way to Richard. Not in all ways, but in a little way to to that bloody bloody king. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you, does it act up when you sit too long? If if you're not in a uh, up, you know, a stiff chair. I've been very fortunate that it is an old. Uh, it's about a six year old injury that uh, comes and goes. Um, and when it goes, it, it really does go. It's just a little stiffness in the morning, and and then I I can you know stretch it out, and I'm good for the rest of the day. I That's ninety percent of the time. Uh, every once in a while, it flares up in a bad way, but normally. Yeah, not. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, I still remember my introductory show based on Robin Hood. Thank you so much for that. You and Chelsea. Oh, hey, yeah, wonderful. So, so that's who <laughs> D O O R three is. Does that yeah. ring a bell? Uh, it. There's so it many. Does. People. Yeah. Right, but um, it's still who exactly? <laughs> They're going to give us clues over and over again. Little by little, they're going to say. Uh, there was a yeah. chocolate ice cream cone involved, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it may or may not have been Arizona or. <laughs> now, where did you grow up? I grew up in in uh, outside of Phoenix, Arizona, about uh, Arizona, yeah, yeah, Western Valley of Phoenix, yeah. And that's when you went to Arizona State. You said initially for the BA, and then that's right. Yeah, worked high, your uh, way uh, east through high school in in Arizona, and then um, uh, through college with Arizona State. Yeah. And then was there any LA involved, or did you just come straight east? Did you go no, west to LA directly after? I was making sure I. I thought I was New York bound, but I wanted to make sure about LA because it was so much closer. So that's when I went out to Redlands and did a couple of years at the Redlands Shakespeare Festival 
Uh, and so I got some good um, uh, experiences and some good training from them. But I saw the LA scene through Redlands, I, you know, going into uh, LA and just seeing what permeated out, and it just wasn't quite for me. Right, I took a trip right. to New York, and I realized I was home. That so you felt, yeah, you felt like absolutely uh, cool from Rhonda as far as the clip. Cool, hi John and Jim from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Hey, more East Coast love. Uh, Sherry says, John, you're very convincing, King. You look good in a crown. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll I'll take that into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When you go in the supermarket, he's going to go with, in with a crown and he's going to part the sea like Moses. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, move. <laughs> I go to the front of the line. So lovely to see some of Richard III, but yes, we're glad you don't resemble him as person in person. <laughs> yeah, I said, and I just a slight resemblance. You could be a, like a cousin of Mark Zuckerberg. There is a little bit of, and you've probably heard that before. There's a little bit of a a, a look of Zuckerberg. Oh uh, yeah, it'd be nice I, to have some of the money of Zuckerberg, but. Uh, <laughs> There's if I could be a cousin and get the cousin money, I'd be even okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you could play them if they do another movie or something. Yeah. Kathy Short sends your hearts and claps. And uh, cool stuff, cool stuff. So we have another clip too, John, as we want to talk more about your incredible career and the fabulous things you're doing. We've got some great photos too. Um, which one should we go to next? Duke or the breakfast uh, clip? Well, uh, yes, I didn't um, is uh, more compelling. The other one is is more of a, a far away clip, which might not be so visually compelling, but it's a little longer. If you wanted to cut it off, um, you know, it's it's a five minute clip, so you could cut it short if you'd like. But that's a so, good one. Yeah, uh, preface it for us. What is it we're about to see, and what is it connected to? Sure. Yes, I didn't is um, uh, a short uh, independent film um, by uh, filmmaker uh, director um, Ed Kearns. Uh, who is a, a fantastic uh, uh, writer and filmmaker uh, based out of Phoenix. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we collaborated on on this, and it was my first... Um, I, it might have been my first independent film completely, but it was my first definitely major role. Um, uh, it's about a very awkward person who uh, sees an ad that a uh, dog has been found, and uh, if this is your dog, please let me know. And he answers the ad. And you're not really sure if that's his dog or not, but he answers the ad. And so this is the, the, the day that he wakes up to, to go and retrieve the dog is this breakfast scene. All right. Let's take a look right now. More of John L. Peacock. Enjoy.
That was cool. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, even though it's tied to the dog, it, it almost, it's, that could have been the day in the life of COVID experience too, the, what we do. It, it reminded me a little of some of that. Uh, so what was that like working on that project? Your, uh, your audio went out again. <laughs> I like that look. <laughs> if, if you're right. Hold on. Oh, okay. you, know, you, you got it. Whatever it is, it's probably something loose. Cause as soon as your the big hand comes, it yeah. gets scared. It gets scared by the, it's like the chiller theater hand that used to come on channel 11 in New York chiller. When the hand, your hand comes <laughs> towards that microphone, it suddenly works. <laughs> it's like, no, it's no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, it's like I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to miss mess with Richard the Third. Um, so you were saying what it was like working on that particular project again? That's a that's a real deviation from the Richard the Third. It just shows the scope of your abilities and talents. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it was a weird full circle uh, having seeing all of that so many years ago and really talking about that that life in the COVID. It's like this person was so isolated, but they were self-isolated, but it really mirrors what so many people are having to go through, whether they like it or not. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. And some of the routine of it all. Uh, wh yeah. How long ago was that created, that piece? Oh, uh, I'm going to say about 14, 15 years ago. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was my very first uh, uh, major indie film project. So it, it's what got me into the indie scene of right. film, uh, the right. filmography. Yeah. Some independent, I've been on a couple of them, some independent projects are really, really cool. They don't really get the spotlight that they deserve. There was a, there was one I was, um, Hat City Productions in Connecticut uh, had brought me in to do one where I was uh, playing, I was actually playing Jim Masters. They had me as a host, mm -hmm. like a-, a yeah an anchor and a host and they had the jib and then I was like reading breaking news or something. And they brought me in and I said, what's the name of the character? They said, it's going to be Jim Masters <laughs> said, we can't, <laughs> we can't change that. And I said, okay. And that was cool. I know they're working on it's independent and they had like four or five other things in, in the uh, pipeline, but um, COVID sort of paused. We were done with what we had to do, but as far as some of the branding, marketing, all the other parts that that's, they're doing that as quickly as they can, but with COVID, yeah. it's uh, Nicole Kearns says, oh my, that was a blast from the past. Uh, yeah, uh, Ed Kearns is a uh, wife and actually she uh, was, you, you only see a half second of her, but she's the person who found the dog <laughs> in the film. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, uh, Merlin yeah. asks, is that your regular routine? Is that, yes, is that the exactly. life from the day of John? <laughs> yeah, uh, leave, leaving leaving the film uh, the the milk out on the cupboard uh, and uh, and the, the the cereal in the fridge. That's my normal routine. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what kind of cereal was it? Was it Captain Crunch, Lucky Charms? What was? <laughs> I think it was Joe O's, uh, the old Trader Joe's brand. <laughs> we actually have two boxes of that in our house. They're fantastic, aren't they? Good. <laughs> I can't believe they're Joe's O's. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That is funny. Usually, I usually I usually have something here from Trader Joe's, like lemonade or something. Yeah. Um, that they they want you to sing. There's a couple <laughs> of them here that if they hear somebody sing, they want everything shifted and they want them to sing. So Canada wants you to sing. Florida wants you to sing. Uh, you got any Moon River in you or anything? <laughs> well, well, I have something. Uh, so the other clip that you have, I uh, you, like I said, it's right? not so visually uh, appearing, but uh, it's it's um, the 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 speech of Duke Orsino that opens the play of Twelfth Night. It's not singing, but it's Shakespeare, and it has some good rhythm to it. If you'd like to, if you'd like to hear that in lieu of a song, absolutely. In lieu of a song. <laughs> what, what a smooth way to say it. <laughs> In lieu of a song, we're going to give you Duke, Duke Orsino. And yeah. here we go. How's, Enjoy. The, how's, how's the sound for it? Is it all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Just so far, sure I'm not cutting out. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. It's whenever your hand goes towards the mic. The I mic, know. The mic sort of says. Freaked uh -uh. out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. If music be the fruit of love, 
play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may so sicken and die. <laughs> that straight again. Without a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving over. Enough. No more. It's not so sweet now as it was before. <coughs> Spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou then! Notwithstanding thy capacity, receive us the sea. Not enters there of what validity and pitch soe'er, but falls into abatement and low price. Even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastic. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. <laughs> Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first. Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned it. How oh, now? What news from her? So please, my lord, you might not be admitted. No. But from her hands made to return this answer. Oh? The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at example of you. But like a cloister, she will veil and walk, and watch her once a day in her chamber around with eye offending brow. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that had the heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love unto a brother? How will she love when the rich golden shaft have killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart these sovereign thrones are all supplied and build her sweet perfections with one self king. Ah! Away! <laughs> before me to sweet beds of flowers! Love thoughts lie rich when canopy with bowers. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so what was it like performing in that? I mean, again, it just shows the scope and the range. Well, that was so much fun. I, it actually was a return home. I had been in New York for many years at that point. Uh, it was, I think, three or four years ago that I returned back to Arizona to Southwest Shakespeare Company and performed that role of, of yeah. the Duke. Um, so it was a beautiful experience in many different ways. He's He's a fun uh, role. The, the play is one of my favorites of all of all time. It's so funny and has such rich characters. It's such a good ensemble piece that uh, th there was so many fun moments in it all, overall. But to be able to come back home as a New York actor and, and get to be in a familiar space, but in a very different way um, right. as not a resident um, of, of Arizona at that time. So it was a beautiful experience in many different ways. Absolutely, absolutely. Very deep too. Tessa, uh, Tess says, uh, "Magnificent." Marla claps, claps, claps. Uh, Merlin asks, "Ever been to Stratford Shakespeare Festival in Ontario, Canada?" Not yet. Uh, was intending to go uh, this summer. I have yeah. a friend who was uh, performing in the Shaw Festival, which is not too far away from there. So I was going to go make a double header, but ha. Huh. So when it comes back, I will. But now, unfortunately, not yet. Where are some other festivals and venues and places where you would dream of being a part of it and or performing yourself or presenting a work at this particular location, festival or venue? And do you have some dream places around the world that are on that list of yours? Uh, Shakespeare's Globe of London is a, a, such a great stage um, to, to be uh, on. And so I'd love to present work there. Uh, with the Royal Shakespeare uh, 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 Company of, sure, of yeah. England, um, that's uh, that's a company that's been a dream of mine. The Stratford is also being the largest of the of North America is definitely a, been a dream of mine. 
Um, my first major Shakespeare that I was able to see such a great production and such a great company was the Utah Shakespeare Festival. Mm. Uh, so because of that, um, that connection to them, I've always longed to go back and, and be a performer with them someday. Um, so I've been only naming Shakespeare places, but... Um, it's a big Shakespeare night, yeah. Well, yeah, it, like I said, for, for dream venues, that, that's what really pops into mind. Um, there's some companies uh, that, um, that I'd, I'd love to be a part of, uh, but for as far as venues specifically, uh, that's, that's what really uh, came to mind. Are there any dream productions that you would like to be a part of or interpret yourself as well? Others that are out there, maybe even aside from Shakespeare, that you like, yeah, I'd really like to be a part of that, or I wish that we could create, you know, an interpretation of that. Uh, uh, it, um, the Glass Menagerie is a is a, a perfect play uh, in my mind, uh, and to be a part of that, you know, Jim would be nice, but uh, to actually be take on the role of Tom is a, yeah. is a dream role of mine that I've not been able to fully uh, actualize as of yet. Um, and there's so much that can be done with that that beautiful piece it, that mm -hmm. always comes to mind first. Uh, things with um, Bedlam Theater Company, they they're so inventive. Um, uh, St. Anne's, there's there's so many really strong interpretations and strong uh, visions of theater that are coming out of uh, uh, places like those that I'd love to be a part of and collaborate with um, and bring my own, you know, either as an actor or in some other capacity now that I'm working as a director that I've been writing for a while, um, that, you know, any capacity I could see myself fitting into with them. Do you like uh, writing? Do you like the art of being a playwright and creating some of your own productions from scratch? That's a funny question that you ask uh, specifically. Do I like it? Um, I've, I've many times said it, acting is like uh, going on and playing a game and having a lot of fun um, in, with the certain you know, uh, guidelines in place. Writing to me is like splitting open my veins and pouring it onto the page for everyone to see. Uh, it is so exposing, it is so, I, I feel so vulnerable in, in ways that I feel vulnerable in acting, but it, there's a difference to it. I, I can hide behind a character in certain aspects, in, in certain, like just a switch of the, the mindset for it. But really with writing, it is, I am naked and, and just exposing myself in the, in the most vulnerable, scary way possible that I, I it terrifies me. So mm. do I like it? Ugh. Do I love it? Do I, I wouldn't keep on doing it if there wasn't something that pushed me forward and, and gave me a thrill of, uh, well, this is, this is me. <laughs> it challenges you. It sort of yeah, challenges you in way. ways to be able to be confident enough to put it out there and, and share it with the world and we'll see where it goes from there. But it's sort of like uh, something that there might even be a slight fear of, but you're working towards a you know, getting past the fear by doing it. It's almost like yeah. how many times have people had things that they wanted to do in life and they didn't do it because there's this, all these different limitations we put on them by, usually it's self-imposed, Yeah. but then we, we try it, we give it a shot and it's like, you know, that wasn't so bad. Wow, that reaction was kind of cool. Maybe I'll throw out a little bit more. Wow, people are actually enjoying this. They're actually responding to it. It's inspiring them. Sometimes that's what happens as well, but would you say generally you prefer playing other people than yourself? Uh, I find it easier. I find there's uh, something- A lot of actors I, too, yeah. yeah. A lot of performers like taking on a role uh, other than the role of themselves. Yeah, even when I, I host play readings, it's, it's a role that I can slip into of, okay, I'm now the host of play readings with friends. I have my certain speech that I give about uh, you know, what the rules of uh, or the guidelines of how to give feedback for each play. Uh, and so there's a the, the routine gives me a, essentially a role to, to play. Uh, I, I've been a teacher for a long time. I was teaching on the college level for a bit and also on the high school level and that I'm able to slip into the role of the teacher. But uh, for some reason with acting, I can't there's no it's it's a big open field and there's no tree to hide behind. There's no, none of that characters because every single word, every single character, every single moment, everyone knows it's me because my name is, is the, the author, right? And so I think that's the difference that 
And it's really just a mindset. It's really just a, I, I'm still, I'm still being so vulnerable when I'm acting. I'm not, I'm not putting on a mask because that's just, that's a different kind of hiding, but I'm able to say, well, it wasn't quite me. It was, uh, and, and so it just is easier. I think that's the biggest thing that I feel. So you'd be a great ghost writer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unnamed source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. <laughs> uh, Tess says, I swear I was just going to ask if you teach. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is cool. Uh, Bernadette says the glass menagerie loves that. Tess also says, what an, what an honor to be on the stage with you. Such a generous actor as well. Wow. It's beautiful. <laughs> and uh, Bernadette brings up the Maryland Renaissance Festival. I, I don't know it, but uh, I'm, I, I, I've heard about the, uh, the Pennsylvania uh, uh, Shakespeare Festival and, um, you know, the DC one. So I know that area. Um, yeah. But when they start bringing uh, things back, I'm, I, we're planning on traveling a little bit more. We want to possibly get a camper van. Uh, we did a 21 day trip actually just recently around the United States. And so th yeah. that, yeah, we rented a, a, a van and went 9,000 miles, uh, northern route down to the southern route and back and made it. Uh, back on the third to, to be able to, wow. to vote. Um, and how many days did that take? 21 days. It was a really fast trip. It's a 21 day trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, that thought is, it's oh, unbelievable. We, we can buy one of those for not too expensive and then go to these places without having to, you know, rent or, or fly or things like that. So these kind of local uh, uh, festivals are definitely now on our radar more. What, what was the starting point? Did you leave from New York and then go south? And how'd you, what was the pattern you took, the path? We, well, so my mom is, is currently in Idaho. Um, and so we went north. We went out of New York um, uh, and went straight through Pennsylvania and, and Chicago. Uh, saw the Badlands and, and Mount Rushmore and, and uh, uh, you know, Yellow, uh, Yellowstone, all those big, national parks yeah. saw, uh, saw my mom in idaho kept on going to seattle went down the pacific coast highway into la and then literally took the southern route back home it was mm. a big old circle <laughs> to arizona new mexico and texas and then up a little bit um, cool. uh, um yeah Mississippi, what did you uh, uh what did you learn what what did you gain from that what you know seeing the different parts of the country the different cultures different people how has it changed your, what did you absorb from an experience like that? Not everybody gets a chance to do something like that. I would recommend it. A lot Me of people, too. you know, we all want to go to Europe and all these other fabulous places, but the United States is such a beautiful place and such a big, expansive country. And there's so many unique, different parts to it. It's worth getting out there and exploring. Um, so how did, you know, what was that? Uh, how deep were you moved by that? It was something that um, right before the election, there were people talking like, oh, you're going through all those places and, you know, one way or another. And what what moved me, what what gave me a lot of hope just in general um, for for uh, America is the people I saw, no matter where they were coming from, um, uh, politically or even, you know, economically, where you know, how many people are surrounded, you know, they are in a super rural area or a bigger city like Chicago, um, you know, doesn't matter where these people's lives are. A really big thing that kept on coming through was a want of connection, uh, an understanding that we're all in this together right. and an appreciation for people who saw them as human. Uh, mm -hmm. And so when I got to be seen as human and when I, I saw, I when the person understood that I was seeing them as human as well, always came back 100% positive. I only had really, really good experiences with people. Someone in Alabaster, Alabama uh, came up to me uh, with my long hair and my leather satchel that looks like a purse. And our, our camper van had a whole lot of fish on it uh, because that's what that company does is they paint different things outside. And so we, we stood out in the small rural town of Alabama, Alabaster, Alabama. And he immediately came up, came up and razzed me a little bit about this and that, and then immediately came back with, you know, uh, but but you're you're good people, and and uh, and just everything that we talked about was that's what we want to see, that's what we're hoping for, that's what we're so happy to see in each other, um, and so many positive 
And he, he ended up saying, you know, without us talking politics, he said, it doesn't matter what your politics are. There's good people everywhere. And that was Very a true. major takeaway that I took. That was the that was the embodiment of what the experiences I had over and over again across the United States. And so coming back the day of the election with nothing you know, determined, I, I knew that we were going to be OK. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there, it will change things on the political yeah. front. But as far as humans, humans are not going to be changed by a vote. And humans are going to want to see other humans in a positive light and want to be seen in that same way. So that was yeah. a, a, a beautiful experience that I, I can I'll always rely back on as as seeing the the wonderful humanity in everybody. It's there, absolutely. It's there in the big cities, yeah. the small towns, and everywhere in between. I agree. And I often tell people not only to explore the country and go off the beaten path too. You know, go through the yeah. cities, go to go to if you're going to go to you know the tourist traps and places like that. Do that too if you want. Sure, but go off the beaten path and, and go to that little, you know, breakfast place and that little bakery and go in and see Stella in the diner or whatever. Uh, and we always do that. Sometimes, you know, everybody in the family says, oh, when you get in the car with Jim, you never know where you're going to go. And we went from Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, through Boston, through Rhode Island, and did a whole loop in a day. Yeah, <laughs> stopping off, and it was fall, fall foliage, <laughs> New England fall foliage, stopping yeah. off at little apple cider farms, and there was no plan, and nothing was scripted, and we just went. And the people we met, and the the uh, visual, stunning, picturesque views that were there, just got you to remember some of the constants in life and some of the cool things. And I also recommend people, you know, a lot of people like to complain about different things, and I tell people, uh, it's always good to to leave your neighborhood and go out and explore. Not only will you, and that's including leaving here, leaving the United States, go to your yeah. other parts of the world. You'll find various things that you love about wherever you're at, whatever country, whatever village you're in, wherever you are, but you'll also get a reappreciation for home. You, I, I, every time I've gone to Europe on TV shoots, wherever I've been overseas, I fell in love with wherever the place is, but also had a re-appreciation for home and the conveniences and the way of life and the freedom and the exchange and some of those things that is not always available everywhere else. And, um, and then it makes you really appreciate uh, the country, appreciate America, appreciate where we live and where we're from. And, by leaving, sometimes that can happen too for people. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing. You got to explore, get out and explore and connect with people, right? Yep. Yeah. The biggest thing I saw was that how beautiful America is from its nature to its buildings to its people. Just, just, just seeing the, the beauty out there. It's really, yeah, it really is something. Absolutely. Um, we've got a couple of other comments coming in. Pete Bennett says, I've heard that Redlands, California was the turning point literally and proverbially on the cross country trip. What was it about Redlands? He's smiling. He's, he's... <laughs> well, well yeah. it is, it is the turning point from going uh, to the, from the West, to the, uh, from East to West, West to East. Uh, and uh, Redlands is the home of the Redland Shakespeare Festival. And uh, my good friend, Pete Bennett, uh, um, so we were able to see the, you know, it was the, the halfway point. It was the, from the, okay, we're going out to so like, we're going home and just that mindset and everything. It was quite, a, quite the turning point. Linda asks, have you ever heard, thought of making a movie or play about the travels? We're, uh, my partner and I are, have been writing. Uh, we took a lot of pictures and, um, you know, we wanted to document it in, in many ways. Uh, yeah. so that, that was definitely a thought of maybe, uh, recreating it or, or just creating a, a, a book of it of some sort. Those things are really amazing when they happen. Uh, I mentioned it on this show a couple of times about how I was on a TV shoot uh, in the Las Vegas area, just west of Las Vegas, a town called Pahrump, Nevada. And it's about an hour west of Vegas. And we were on a TV mm -hmm. shoot. And I was interviewing this famous oil painter who lives there and was originally from Bakersfield, California. When the shoot was over and the film crew went back to L.A., I still had a lot of time left before I had to uh, get to Vegas and get on the plane and come back east. So I took the rental car and I ended up finding myself driving alone in August without telling anybody, without all the supplies, the water, the food, 
and a rental car I know nothing about other than the make and the model. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a fan belt that needs to be replaced or, you know, <laughs> low air in the tire or something's going to happen to this car. Uh, nobody knew, family, friends, nobody knew, but I ended up driving alone uh, through and back in the dead of August, uh, Death Valley. Yep. <laughs> that was a really grounding experience because the ocean is my go-to Zen place growing up on the coast here. The ocean is it. Um, but you know, the love of a city and the people and the action and the sounds and forest is dense and lush, but death Valley is death Valley. It's stripped, yeah. it's stripped, it's risky. It's all these crazy things. And it was extraordinary. It really was. And it was unplanned. It wasn't something normally we would plan this kind of thing out. There were no yeah. other loved ones and friends with me to share. I'm communal, sort of like you. I like to share experiences. If I can share the experience rather than have it alone, sometimes I tend to want to share it. Um, probably why I'm a host, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sharing, the exper creating and sharing the experiences. Um, but this was not something that was going to be shared. It was something where it was going to be a story I was going to tell that would inspire other people. So I can understand some, that's why I asked that question about what are some of the things for you individually uh, that you really absorbed um, in terms of just your own grounding and sensibilities that may have even enriched your look at life as you just described from that experience of going to all those different areas and cultures and foods and people and uh, visualizations of landscape and all and what you picked up from that it's a really cool thing i recommend people do stuff like that if they can Fair. you know Fair. yeah yeah it's really important uh merlin asks do you have another state favorite other than arizona oh uh I allowed to say you like anything other than arizona you right were, yeah <laughs> committed by the governor to say that <laughs> City favorites, uh, Chicago, um, New Orleans is one of my favorite cities in the U.S., um, Portland. Um, I, it was great to see Portland again, uh, especially with everything that's going on in, in the news with them. And Oregon, seeing how, yeah, yeah. yeah Portland, Oregon. Um, Portland, Maine, I, I didn't get to this time, though it's also a very lovely city. Yeah, beautiful, uh, yeah. But it was great to, to get over to Portland, Oregon and, and see how normal it is and how, how um, much of a... Of a of its own energy has stayed intact uh, with everything that's going on uh, right. and especially with, with how it's being presented in the news. So uh, that's a, a beautiful city that I'd, I'd recommend. Um, you also have a connection to Westerly Rhode Island. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking before the show about um, for the past two years, uh, my partner, Elena Rader, and I have been, we worked with a theater company in Westerly to create a theater program uh, for the local high school there, Westerly High School. And for two years, we uh, developed curriculums. Uh, we, we started to create an interest for uh, after school uh, program that the drama club and the school plays. We directed the students in, in four different productions, two plays, two musicals, uh, starting with the um, Our Town was our very first one back. Uh, and uh, we just recently handed it off over to a full-time teacher and, and we're able to take a step back and let it just live as this new theater uh, program in the high school. Uh, and so it's been a beautiful experience with the, the students getting to see them uh, grow up over the past two, two and a half years that we had with them. And to see that, that Westerly is, uh, it's a small little town in the Southern uh, Rhode Island, borders uh, Connecticut, right on the, the beach there. So it's known for its beaches, uh, but that also draws um, the the music and the visual arts and a lot of theater uh, to that city and just uh, arts in general, but they didn't have a theater program in their high school. And so um, now these students who are surrounded by such rich arts uh, around them at all times now have uh, an initial education and an initial exposure to the theater arts uh, so that they can see it and connect to it and not just appreciate it as an audience member but uh, connect to it as a as a fellow artist and possibly see that as a path that they can choose uh, for future so it was a really wonderful experience have you ever had any uh connection with the goodspeed opera house in connecticut yeah no uh not not directly i know them but uh, we, we didn't connect yeah, good speed musicals and all. They're fantastic. Really yeah. a lot of rich culture there. Matter of fact, June and I and uh, Pepe Castro, who was also a guest and several others were there 
Uh, they do this writer's colony where you go and you stay there and you have your own individual home. It's really beautiful. It's right across from the opera house itself. And, uh, and then everybody collaborates on productions that they're writing and, and creating. And they'll sing and they'll dance and they'll do play readings. And it's all people who are they pitching these ideas and they have these ideas for productions but they're all writers. They're people who are, you know, dreaming up these fabulous ideas. And it's like for a couple of days and we went there um, and went to the writer's colony and stayed there for a couple of days. And it was fantastic. And uh, it's again, it's a series of these beautiful like homes that I have passed a million times and thought they were private residences. What a nice house that is. And, and it's actually part of the good speeds, um, the good speed musicals, uh, writers colony that they do. And it was really, really cool. It was a lot of fun. And, and June was uh, a part of that whole thing. That's right. Amazing week to create together. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's um, so wonderful. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Pop you'd probably love something like that. Um, we have some cool shots too, my friend that I want to show people. Um, of you doing your thing now couple that uh we dug up couple that you sent as well tell us about this one <laughs> uh <laughs> that's my partner and i so uh instant shakespeare company is a company that's been in new york for i believe this is their 21st or 22nd season so for over 20 years they've been reading uh staged uh readings of shakespeare's canon uh at public libraries for, for over 20 years. And mm. uh, Elena and I were able to play uh, Hamlet and Ophelia for one of their productions, um, I think it was about a year or two ago. Um, and so that was uh, an amazing experience. And so it's fully, it's not, um, it's, it's staged. We, uh, we are standing up, we are, we're moving around, but we have these first folio uh, 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 printings of the play that we are reading out of and, and just uh, seeing what live, um, energy can be created uh, through that. That uh, was me as uh, the main character in The Physicist, uh, Frederick Durmont, uh, uh, Austrian writer, um, about uh, geniuses who are pretending to be insane so they can be in an insane asylum, and Mobius, my character, uh, and the nurse who uh, is telling her that she's, uh, telling him that she's in love with him. Uh, mm. is happening in that moment. That's also uh, around the time that I herniated my disc on uh, stage yeah. uh, during a performance. And it was the hardest 30 minutes of my life because I didn't know what was happening. And for some reason, I felt it was not bad enough to stop the show, which looking back, I probably should have, but I didn't. <laughs> and The show must continue. go on. The yeah. show did go on. Uh, uh, we that, that production, we had all, all of the cast members uh, sit on stage when they were not participating. So they, everyone was seen and was seeing the show uh, at all times. And one of the other nurses at intermission, when I finally was able to get off stage, ran up to me and was like, that was so vulnerable and so beautiful. What happened? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm in excruciating pain though, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. funny you, you show that picture specifically. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Facial expression is as much the character you're playing and the pain. <laughs> yeah. And me trying to suck in the pain yeah, and not yeah. let it out. <laughs> right. Right. That is the test of a true professional, my friend, a true professional. Here's Oof. another shot. Oh, uh, that was, uh, I got to perform at La Mama uh, Experimental uh, Theater Club in uh, the Lower East Side of Manhattan a venue that I've been wanting to do and unfortunately have been able to do for this company uh, that's the Czechoslovak American Marionette Theater Company. So they are puppet puppetry theater uh, company. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I got to play several roles. Uh, it, so the, the, the play is called The Life and Times of Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes. And uh, a, a great, uh, just talking about his life from, from birth to death, um, which included this little thing he did towards the end of his life, which was really horrible. Um, uh, but, uh, just talk in one of the characters I got to be as a pup, uh, as a puppet was, um, uh, uh Jackie O. 
mm. uh, in the in the pink dress and the the uh, pill bottle, you know, the pill top, pill box, uh, pill box hat, pill box. Thank you, yeah. the pill box yeah. hat and the and the pearls. Uh, so and I I put on pearls and the hat and then had this Jackie O character that was in the full pink dress and just was that was a great great experience. But I think I was a, a CIA agent in that moment that I was holding up the gun. <laughs> you look the part, I tell you. You can really take on a lot of different roles, a lot of different looks as well. I think what's really cool about your experience and you know this life's journey that you're on, John, is not only are you the the performer, you you also have this real passion and desire to pay it forward, to uh, inspire others, teach others, share your knowledge and wisdom with others. As like Marcia says, what a great variety of roles. Roles as far as the different characters you're playing, but a couple of different roles in life as well. And I think that's terrific. And being artistic director, director with play uh, readings with friends, I mean, that just sort of solidifies that, doesn't it? Yeah, in many ways. it. it um... It allows me to take on a lot of different of those, like you said, roles um, of of curating, of of bringing uh, the culture and the and the community together, and it's it, it's very satisfying. I get to act during it. Uh, I get to direct sometimes. I'm directing a, a, a piece coming up um, at the end of November called Star Chamber, uh, written by uh, Robert Gulak. Um, we're able to. We have a. Um, we're all equity actors, um, and we have an agreement with the theater authority uh, to benefit um, this other great company, um, the Shakespeare Forum of New York. Uh, they they bring theater arts into New York City, and so uh, all of the proceeds that we uh, gain from this production are going to go to them. Uh, so we get to help benefit people. We get to help uh, create theater, which we're all starving for. We get to help present theater, which we believe so many people are starving for. Uh, and it all comes out of this this play readings with friends. So it's really afforded me so many different opportunities um, that I I wouldn't have had otherwise. How do people get involved in that? Is that something where the general public can get involved, or is it people that are in the business? How do people get involved with uh, play readings with friends? Uh, it has been around on um, uh, Facebook is our main uh, uh, connection. Uh, so if you just uh, Facebook uh, uh, dot com slash Play readings with friends, and that's our administrative page. Uh, it leads you to the the group um, that has all the play readings individually. It lets you know about all the performances and productions that we are currently doing. So, if you wanted to uh, come in as an audience member, as a writer, uh, if you have uh, scripts that you'd like to have read, or even as an actor um, or other capacities with these productions, um, that's really the way to get a hold of us. If you don't do Facebook. Uh, just emailing playreadingswithfriends at gmail.com. Uh, you can also uh, get onto our, our mailing list and connect to us through there. So either facebook.com slash playreadingswithfriends or playreadingswithfriends at gmail.com are the two ways that you can directly get involved with us. Audience, actor, writer, and beyond. The And sometimes the audience becomes an actor or writer because maybe they came in as an audience member and they're like, oh, I also do this and then end up yep. So it's a whole like a collaboration, a network of people, and a lot of uh, cross blending, which I think is awesome, right? Oh yeah, and uh, many times I found a lot of the writers who come in, they they many times come back afterward as audience members because they're craving to hear other works and to see how 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 theater is is, is moving forward. Uh, so yeah, that audience turn into into writers, uh, writers turn into actors, actors turn into audience, and and the circle continues in, in many great ways. That's really cool. What's uh, what's the home base? It's it's New York, but is it Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens? What's the home base for it? It's Brooklyn. When we come back uh, into our studio, uh, into our black box theater, it's uh, in 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 downtown Brooklyn. So right at the hub, right near Manhattan, but um, it's still in Brooklyn proper. Um, and you know we can expand after that, but right now that's our that's our home base and has yeah. been for a long time. Why do you love this work? Why do you love being involved in uh, performance and, and the arts in the way that you you do, John? You've surrounded your life with it and continue uh, many to. reasons uh, why I like uh, teaching, why I like collaborating, and why I like even these kind of conversations. It's that it's that longing to connect and uh, the feeling of of uh, collaboration, of of support, and 
knowing that we have each other's backs, that we have that we can pick each other up whenever we're down. Uh, that's that's a feeling that is greater than anything else I've ever uh, come across in my life. Uh, it's something that inspires, that um, that motivates, and that sparks uh, continued creativity and joy. Um, so that it's it all comes together. The the teaching, the 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 desire for community, and the desire for uh, performing arts or arts in general just all come back to that uh, connection and uh, that inspiration. What would you say to somebody watching live now, or maybe we'll, they'll watch this in the archives on the Gym Masters TV YouTube channel, who are considering going into the arts, going into, you know, whether it's dance or, or singing or acting or writing or producing, whatever it is, whatever direction, but still getting into this realm of uh, performance and entertainment. Um, what would you say to somebody who's considering it? Um, I know a lot of people have said, and, and I concur, a number of people that we've had on have said, if you're going into any of these, any of these industries, even television, radio, no matter, any of these industries that demand so much of yourself, so much of your time, so much blood, sweat, and tears, and sacrifice, and opportunities for rejection and all the different nuances that are a part of all of this. Don't make the desire to be famous the number one reason why you want to do this. I want to do this just because I want to be famous. That's not the reason to go in because that could be fleeting. That could be disappointing. That could be never fully achievable, but also at the same time, uh, you really have to have your heart and soul in it and um, 100% of you in it and have a love for it because when you don't, people can spot that quickly, that you're not in it for one of the right reasons or in it just for the, uh, you know, the icing on the cake part of it, the glamour part, but not everything that takes, that it takes to create these, these wonderful things that we're all involved in. Um, fame would not be the reason to chase any of this work, right? I would agree, yeah. Uh, my advice and thoughts to anyone who wants to enter into the arts of any capacity is um, pay attention to the process and, um, and live in the process. The more, the more that happens, the more the benefits of the arts come back to you immediately. I think that all of the arts have a common denominator of empathy and um, the, the need to understand beyond yourself, uh, to understand another person, to understand uh, 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 the, the visual aspect of things, depending on what art it is, whether it's from writing to uh, visual to performing arts, there is a need to understand something beyond yourself. And it, to, uh, to feel the process and to live in the process of any of those arts, you get to feel that understanding. You get to feel that, that, um, that empathy beyond yourself, and that brings so much back to you. And uh, just learning that, even if you ultimately fall out of the arts or it becomes more of a hobby and less of a, of a, of a life path, it's still those lessons and those experiences will stay with you and it will benefit you in every other path that you choose. So I, I'm always gung ho for people uh, to go into the arts and I, you know, not everyone's going to quote unquote make it. And I think that's that fame thing that people seek. But if you pay attention to the process, no matter how long you're in it, you'll have those moments, you'll have those experiences that will stay with you and will um, help you with, with empathy and understanding and, and collaboration and, and compassion for the rest of your life. Exactly right. Beautifully said. I uh, hear, hear. I agree 100%, really. Um, when you look forward in your own career and in your own life's journey, uh, what are some other things that you have not tackled yet? We talked about venues and ultimate places to produce and or perform. What are some other areas of the arts that you would like to sort of dive into over time? Things that you're like, gee, one day I want to do that. Gee, I still want to do that for John L. Peacock. Uh, uh, where where my uh, theater path is going is is wonderful. Uh, I have those... Um, you know, going out to Germany in 2021, I'll be acting in the plays that I've written. And so that's a huge jump, I know, uh, even from where I'm at right now. So as far as where my theater path is going, 
I'm enjoying it. I don't want to put down, you know, the, the thoughts of Broadway or, you know, these kind of goals that may or may not be achievable because so many things are being achieved that, that are, uh, I couldn't have even thought of before. Uh, so I, music, I, I'm uh, a bassist. I, I play harmonica and I play didgeridoo. And I'd like to get back uh, into that on a more, um, uh, a, a, more, a more fuller level. So that's something that I was in a college band back in college and it never went anywhere. And I put the bass down for uh, over 10 years. But now that that's coming back and, you know, the COVID uh, time allowed me to dip my toe back into music uh, on a fuller level. And I'm so excited to see where that could lead me in ways that I hadn't thought of before. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the bright lights of this whole scenario we've all been going through globally in this last year is uh, we've been able to, if we're lucky, tap into and review some of the things we stopped doing in life, some of the things that we wanted to pursue, some of the things where life got in the way and we weren't able to complete that task or complete that journey or hobby or reconnect with people, reconnect with ourselves yeah. in such a deeper way. Um, that I think it's it's beautiful because there's so many people that are doing basic things. It isn't all the the glitz and glamour and the the buzz and bling. They're doing basic things. I mean, one of the most popular things this summer was gardening. I mean, yeah. that was the biggest thing that people did this year in the summertime was getting out and working in the soil and planting flowers and doing natural basic things. Uh, and I've always told people professionally and, and on this show as well, during stuff like this, the arts, whether it's music, film, nostalgic TV shows, whatever it is, surround yourself with those good vibes, those good feelings, because the arts really rise to the occasion during times of, of strife and, uh, you know, uh, sadness and uh, unpredictability. And to surround yourself with some of the constants in life, do the gardening, whip out the guitar, start plucking it. Uh, you know, call people, your friends, your family, go to the ocean, listen to the ocean, watch the tide come in and out. It's going to keep, it's been doing that for, you know, thousands of years. It's going to do a thousand years from now past all of this. Yeah. So you know, look up at the sky at night and the stars, watch the sunset. These are things that are constantly there when we're in a world that's spinning where nothing seems like it's constant anymore. Um, surround yourself with some of those constants and it'll help ground you and uh, yeah. works like what you do uh, are some of those constants are some, I mean, Shakespeare is pretty constant. <laughs> That's a real hundred years plus. Yeah. I mean, so, so, you know, some of these things, these beautiful works uh, that uh, people have created things that you're creating as well. Uh, the things that I do, all of us collectively are constants and they reach people at levels that, Maybe they weren't able to uh, be reached at before because our world was spinning so fast. So, you know, we had to be everywhere, do everything, check the inbox. We had to be number one. We had to be the best. We had, I, I've tell, told people this a million times. We were socially distancing already before yeah. we had to social distance. We had our heads stuck on our cell phones. Everybody just plucking away on social media. Go to the restaurant. Everybody's on their phone. Nobody's talking. People are saying, where's all the nice people? Where's the friendly person that says thank you and please and goodbye? And all. Yeah. Everybody's complaining about the civility going away and all of the friendliness. And now we got forced to experience something like this. And I'm hoping that we sort of come out of it. We rise from these ashes uh, more empathetic, kinder, more collaborative, and we listen to each other Um I myself tend to be a unifier versus a sign up to be part of an extreme. I'm not extreme there. I'm not extreme there. I've always been a middle, again, maybe why I'm a host, because I like to bring things together. Let's find the middle. We might not always get everything we want, but let's at least find a middle because the, the earth spins smoother when it's balanced uh, on its axis. So, um, you know, when you look at life in these different ways, th these constants and, and, and the celebration of the arts and things of that nature and like people like yourself, uh, it's really important, isn't it? Surround yourself with the things that are, were there yesterday and gonna be there tomorrow. Yeah, and if we if we do come together, even if we don't have, um, if we have opposing views in one thing or another, we're gonna find out that we're much more than 99% the same versus that 1% difference. 
we, we, we breathe the same air. We have the same blood. We, we, we're so similar in so many ways. We want good. We want to, we want to be happy and we want happiness for others. And, and uh, you know, all the little details, if that's what's getting in our way, just realize how much more the same we are than, than different is, is what, what can bring us together in so many ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. This was fantastic, my friend. I can't believe we've been chatting for about two hours. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it does, everybody says it never, it never, ever, ever feels like that. It feels like it's 50 minutes, 45 maybe, because it's, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's all conversational. We just let it flow. Nothing is scripted or, you know, we all know about scripts. I know about teleprompters. We know about all yeah. that, but the best is when it's organic, authentic, and you just communicate, connect, let it roll. And we've got all these wonderful, lovely viewers around the world participating and sharing their thoughts as well. Um, I certainly hope you enjoyed your time with us, John, and that the show met whatever expectations you had. And uh, you're more than welcome to return and keep me updated on things you're doing. And uh, I certainly hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I certainly have with you. I, I have very much so. I'm so uh, honored to be a part of Lovety Hall. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. He's a Lovety, folks. He got your wish. Such beautiful words. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Sherry. And Z look, peace. <laughs> All right. This is the Lovety start coming in now, and they, they say the thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing with us, John, Kathleen, in Thank New you. York City. Kathleen and I, she's a dear friend. She and I were actually on the Rachel Ray show about two years hey. ago. Yeah. And we, yeah, we hope to be able to do that stuff again once the studios reopen, right? Yeah. Linda in Florida says, time flies when you're having fun, lovely fun. And right. uh, hearts from Marsha. So you say Facebook is the, yeah, that's right. Facebook <laughs> is where they go uh, to learn more about everything. Yeah, if you, have, if you have Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash play readings with friends. Or if you just want to reach out, um, uh, Facebook aside, play readings with friends at gmail.com and uh, we'll, we'll respond back to you and, and see how and show you how you can become involved. Super. Hearts from our dear friend June and Wozniak. Thank you, June. Thank you, Jim and John, for such an amazing and entertaining evening. Good night and many blessings. You're very welcome, you. man. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Thank you, John, for sharing with us tonight. Very Bernadette welcome. It says, uh, thank you so much, John. So enjoyed the clips and the stories. And uh, Juanita, still with us late into the hour. Late, late mm -hmm. for her. Great conversation. She's in thank South you. Africa. You yeah. are both uh, such salt of the earth people. Thanks, John, for your time. Keep well. You salt of the earth. I always, I always love that expression, salt of the earth. I really, yeah, yeah. appreciate that, Juanita. Thanks. I think you're on. I think you're on to something. <laughs> <laughs> flower, flower power. Uh, who's Jen is Zen in Allentown, Pennsylvania. John, thanks for spending time with us. Fun night. I'm surprised you haven't, Jen. You usually ask the guests, are they an ocean person or a mountain person? Most guests have said um, ocean because of their proximity. Like for me, it's the ocean because I grew up on the East Coast. So I've always been near oceans and grew up, you know, within, and I'm a long one now. So the ocean. How about you? Are you ocean? Are you mountain? You know, being raised initially in Arizona. What, what's, what comes to you first for your Zen place? That way, Jen will be able to sleep tonight if she knows that answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know my partner is an ocean person, but coming from Arizona, you know, it's the desert uh, and I'm not a desert person. That's why I got out. But the closest thing to me was two hours north up in Flagstaff. It was the Southern Rocky Mountains. So I'm, I'm going to have to say a mountain person. Jen, you're happy because she says, I'm a mountain woman. She's a mountain hey. woman. So. <laughs> well, Pennsylvania there, they got some good curves in those mountains. Um, yeah. I have to get to, um, I've done, we did a TV shoot in Albuquerque and everybody says, oh, you got to get to Santa Fe. And then the other group says, you've got to go to Sedona. Everybody loves Sedona too. Sedona. Arizona. Oh, yeah. Arizona. Yeah. It is the gem of, of a state. It is the it, it is a beautiful place. Uh, it is surrounded by the red rocks. Uh, it is gorgeous. It's a, a, a kind of beauty you're not rarely ever see in on Earth, and uh, a great yeah. great energy. So I, I've I've been to uh, Santa Fe once in New Mexico, and it's a beautiful uh, art, art, artist cove. 
and I see the similarities to Sedona, but I just know Sedona, so I'd have to recommend highly. Our guest tomorrow night, Glenn Scarpelli, uh, actor, singer, and uh, television station owner. He starred in One Day at a Time, Norman Lear's sitcom from the 70s uh, with Valerie Bertinelli, and he was uh, Alex on One Day at a Time. He's here tomorrow night. Uh, he, They are in Sedona, and he owns the ABC hey. affiliate, I think, in Sedona, the TV station in Sedona, which is kind of cool. But uh, lots of nice well, you, comments coming in. Yeah, what were you going to say? You'll get to hear a lot more about that wonderful little little town. Yeah. Yeah, he sent all kinds of pictures. Nice conversation tonight. Thank you for sharing your time with us, John and Jim. Our pleasure, Kathy. Absolutely. Kathleen says, um, stay safe and be well. Sherry says, another wonderful show, Jim. Thank you for coming to Lovety Hall, John. And yes, please come back soon. Yeah and uh stay safe stay well linda odell have a good evening john and mr lovety and all the loveties christine ramin clifton north carolina one of our loveties thank you for your words of wisdom and for your contributions to theater and teaching too enjoyed the videos and the clips it was great learning of your life and career so many talents you're a lovety hey <laughs> hey, hey, that's sort of fancy. fancy yeah. right? Hey, <laughs> so I only had a jukebox to hit. <laughs> it would be all set. No, but you've yep. got stars above your head, right? That's Isn't that right. cool? Yeah, you've got the. It's like the three wise men. Uh, mm -hmm. She's uh, she's happy. She can go to bed now. You're a mountain guy. You're a mountain Great. guy. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, this was terrific. Really appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate all the time, you know, over two hours here. And uh, you are welcome back anytime. You guys, you stay safe. You stay well. Uh, we have all each other's information. So keep me posted on cool things I you're will. working on. And we'll have you come back and uh, spread the word about our show. We would love that. And yeah. uh, it was absolutely Jim, cool connecting. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. It was wonderful. It was a pleasure having you. You stay well, and we'll talk again soon, okay? Cheers. And you enjoy what's in the mug along with the water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. <laughs> Always a fun time on the Gym Master Show Live. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for all the great comments. Hearts, hearts, hearts from uh, Bernadette. Hearts, uh, the theater community, and awesome from Flower Power. You guys are terrific. And yes, uh, some people were asking me uh, in private messenger, what do I have here? So yeah, this is a nice uh, nice cup of what is no longer hot chocolate. <laughs> it is cold milk. Mm. And yeah, this was pretty cool. This was uh, made by my mother. And um, she. It's like a, it looks like a jean pocket, doesn't it? Kind of cool. And um, yeah, really, really cool stuff. Hope you guys are doing well. All of your friends are here. I know you guys like to see the cast of characters. So there's George Burns. <laughs> George is here. He enjoyed himself tonight here on the Gym Masters Show Live. These headphones tonight are very slippery. I don't know what it is. They want to just go boom right in front of the screen. They want to pop off my head live. Jeannie's in her bottle, and Jeannie says good night to all of you. I know you guys love uh, Jeannie in the bottle. I think it was Jamie DeRoy last night. One of the guests fell in love with this bottle and said, I want that bottle. Uh, who else do we have here? When we were on that TV shoot in uh, Europe, we picked up the Silver Lab. There is Silver. Silver says good night to you as well. And uh, I know you guys are looking for the big panda uh, Lin Lin. Lin Lin is way over there. We'll bring Lin Lin in over the weekend if we can. Uh, Lin Lin is huge. <laughs> That's a huge panda. Jimmy says goodnight to you guys as well. There you go. And uh, of course, one other one who you guys have fallen in love with and is a very special character because this came from Bob Denver's wife. Bob Denver is the actor who played Gilligan on Gilligan's Island and in Dobie Gillis. This is with love from Dream of Denver, his wife who uh, was a guest on our show, wonderful actress herself and producer. She owns um, a radio station in uh, West Virginia, USA. So there's Bob Denver. She looked at our set and she said, Jim, you're missing something. I'm like, what could we possibly be missing on our set? She says, you're missing Gilligan. So, <laughs> so a box arrives and in it is Gilligan. 
Aloha, Trima, Denver. Really beautiful, beautiful of her to do that. So we thank her. And we thank all of you. Tomorrow night, again, we've got a very special guest. You may remember, there he is on the cover of 16 Magazine. The one and only Glenn Scarpelli is going to be here tomorrow live from Sedona, Arizona, actually. Uh, we're really excited about that. He's all excited. We're going to reminisce about his uh, career his uh, childhood growing up in New York, originally from Staten Island, New York. His days, uh, of course, working in Hollywood as an actor, a singer as well. And he owns a television station in Arizona, which is kind of cool. So uh, he is here exclusively tomorrow. That is exclusively on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. Um, he is here tomorrow live at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on the Gym Masters Show Live. Glenn Scarpelli, yeah, actor, singer, and producer, and television station owner. And you remember him, of course, uh, as Alex on One Day at a Time with Mackenzie Phillips and Bonnie Franklin and Pat Harrington and Valerie Bertinelli, the Norman Lear sitcom. And there he is today. Sunday, the one and only platinum selling musical genius, live and direct from Ireland, sitting by his piano will be the one and only Phil Coulter. That's going to be on our YouTube channel exclusively as well. That'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, noon Pacific, and he's going to play live. We have his uh, memoir that he sent to me and autographed and he was involved in uh, part of the uh, creation of Celtic Thunder and a lot of other things. He's a prolific um, record producer, music producer, musician, songwriter. He is a treasure uh, in the music industry. Phil Coulter, the one and only, is going to be here on Sunday. But before that, on Saturday, Celtic Blues musician and singer Matt Steady is going to be here live from England. That's right. He's a really incredible performer and um, brilliant musician and he is really popular and we're very excited to have him here matt steady is going to be here that will be at 4 p.m eastern which will be 1 p.m pacific and it'll be 9 p.m in england ireland and scotland uh he lives in england uh, so he's going to be broadcasting live from England. He's going to perform. We've got all kinds of music. That's Saturday. So again, Saturday, this Saturday, Matt Steady, Celtic Blues musician, live from England. He'll be with us on Saturday, th uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And that'll be 9 p.m. for those of you in the United Kingdom and Ireland. So you can check that out. It's really, really cool. That is on Saturday. That's exclusively on the YouTube channel. So Glenn Scarpelli tomorrow night is on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can comment. Don't miss a thing. There he is when he was on One Day at a Time. On Saturday is a musician, Celtic Blues musician, Matt Steady. Sunday, the one and only platinum selling and winning Music producer, songwriter, musician, Phil Coulter, the one and only. It's going to be here on Sunday. A couple more guests. Um, we have Robert Ciccoli. He's going to be here on Thursday. He's a brilliant actor, film, television, Broadway, you name it. He's on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have award-winning record producer, John Yap here from J Records. He's going to be here on Friday night. Uh, live from Europe as well. That's going to be really cool. That's Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And on Monday, we've got brilliant actor Bill Russell, who's going to be here as well, and producer and so much more. Bill Russell will be with us on Monday. He is a barrel of laughs, and he's really terrific. Uh, you're going to enjoy him on Monday and so much more in between. We thank our great guest tonight, John L. Peacock, uh, Terrific actor, producer, and artistic director of uh, Play Readings with Friends. We really enjoyed having him here on the show. And we certainly hope you enjoyed uh, learning more about him and his passions. It's funny how he said passions and then this picture came up, huh? Perfectly timed. <laughs> and all the different things that uh, he's been involved in in his life and continues to be. Some comments coming in here. Let's see. Uh, you're looking forward to uh, actor Glenn Scarpelli tomorrow. He's all excited. We've been chatting for several weeks on this. 
Um, so it's going to be cool. And that'll be on YouTube. Uh, so those of you watching on Facebook right now, make sure you go to our YouTube channel. We don't want you to miss anything. The YouTube channel is Gym Masters TV. Subscribe to it. Click on it. Um, and that way you can comment and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Because uh, we post a lot of other comment on there. Did you see the wild turkeys video that we posted on Masters Mantras? That was really cool. They came right into our yard. Uh, that's really cool when we capture stuff like that. Fortnite Gaming, Raphael is here. Hello, Fortnite Gaming. Good to see you here on our show as well. Willie says a pleasant good night to you as well, Willie. Let's see if we can squeeze in those uh, Dutch tulips you like. When we were on that TV shoot, we got these uh, tulips in Amsterdam last year. We were in Amsterdam twice in the last two years. So there you go, Willie, for sticking up l late into the hour. What is it? 2 a.m.? Some Something like 10 after 2 a.m. where you are in the Netherlands. I know you love those tulips, Willie. And uh, Kathy Short says, uh, thanks, Jim. Always great listening in. You are welcome. Uh, Bernadette, thank you, Jim, for another wonderful evening. John is a treasure. Uh, I second that. He really is a good guy and with a good heart, and he's very talented, and he's doing a lot of good, good work. Uh, Marilyn in Wichita says, thanks, Jim, for all your work to bring us the shows. Thank you very much. It, it's, uh, it's really an interesting balancing act, especially lately because my professional work is really busy. I'm hosting multiple radio shows. I've got four radio shows to host back to back tomorrow and interviews and with the professional work and then television scripts to write. And then this show producing this show, we into the evening, it's some, sometimes a little bit of a balance, but we do it. We do it. We making sure we try to eat dinner before the shows. Oftentimes I don't eat dinner until after we wrap the gym master show live, but my pleasure, Marilyn. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, Juanita says, thanks Jim for another great show. Good night, everyone. And stay safe. You as well. We always appreciate having you here. And uh, Francis says, wishing everyone a good night. Please stay safe and well. Good night. Uh, good show, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Glad you enjoyed it. And uh, Flower Power. Thanks, Jim. I thought I'd let you ask my Zen question, and you did. Thanks. So you can, you can add that to your score sheet, ocean versus mountain. John likes the ocean, but he loves the mountains. And he got out of the desert. <laughs> so you, I know you're keeping score there. Um, thank you, Jim. Have a great night. Good night, all. Kathleen in New York City. Uh, Linda says, a wonderful show tonight, Mr. Loverty. Uh, George Burns, yeah, you got a chance to see them. Uh, we show them now towards the end of the show versus the beginning so we can get to the show under the way. Uh, Hearts for the Theater Community, awesome. Thank you, my dear friend, June. And thanks for watching tonight. We love it and love you as well. Marla says the time flew by. It did, didn't it? Two hours and 11 minutes. I mean, gee, you know, we could have been in what, Philly by an hour? <laughs> it's, uh, it does go by fast uh, when you have a good time and uh, you sprinkle in some levity. Uh, you can't, Allison can't wait till tomorrow. Thanks for everything. You're welcome, Allison. Have a great rest of the night. You too, June. No sleeping. I know a lot of people aren't sleeping through everything that's been going on. Um, oh, it's 3.09 a.m. where you are, Willie. Wow. Well, I'm glad I, yeah, I'm glad I showed you those tulips. <laughs> 3.09. Wow. That is late. But hey, you did it. You did it, my friend. I appreciate that. Just want to remind everybody that we have 28 weeks, over 200 episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live and counting, as long as you guys are there. Some of us, are you just doing the show during this situation that we're in now? Because some people are just doing things and they're not doing it every night of the week. They're just doing things once a week or here and there. Um, and they probably may stop it after they go back to their work or whatever happens. As long as you guys are there, we'll keep doing this. This is a joy and a pleasure as well. And it's an extension of some of the professional work I do anyway as a television radio host and presenter. Um, yeah, if you missed an episode, everything is there for you. Want to watch this episode with John again? You certainly can. You can share the YouTube link. We invite you to do that. All the past episodes are right there for you on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. All right, gang, we're going to get ready to wrap up. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, Mr. Lovely. It was great seeing you, Linda, 
and Sherry as well. Good night, lovelies. Please be safe. We so enjoy the shows. We'll be here. You as well, Willie. You have a good night. And don't forget, everybody, to relax. Take care of one another. Love one another. Breathe from the diaphragm. We say this at the end of all of our shows. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. We mentioned Rhode Island during this show. This was picked up at a shop in Newport, Rhode Island, when we were there. You can see it's sort of like a 1920s, 1930s beach scene with all the kids at the beach there. Uh, relax, breathe, take care of one another, love one another. And uh, not every day is going to be perfect. Hey, so you make the best of it. You make the best of what you've got and what you've been given and share it with the world. And don't forget to smile. So relax and breathe from the diaphragm. We love when we all get a chance to do that. And um, Francis says, congratulations, Jim, on all our, your shows and the efforts you put into each and every one. Good night. God bless. Love, Francis. You too. Thank you, Francis. I appreciate that. Very kind of you to say that. Good night, Jim, and everyone watching. Stay safe. Stay well. Bernadette, you as well. Double smiles from Willie. <laughs> and thank you, Jim. Fun night. You as well. Flower Power in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, she's going to get ready to uh, jump in her living room. Unless she's in the bed, she'll wiggle in the bed uh, because she likes our theme to our show, the Gym Master Show theme. So the singers and orchestra, you're queued up. You're ready to go, right? So they're queued up. They're ready to go. That's funny how it got the picture got dark. <laughs> um, and uh, Jen in Allentown, Pennsylvania, is going to be jumping around in her living room or wiggling in her bed. She loves the theme music to our show. I think we've covered everything. Just a few more last minute things we like to do uh, here on the show. We always say put smiles on your face and share the smiles. Uh, don't forget to share the lovity. That's really important. And find your Zen place. As I mentioned, mine is the ocean. I love the ocean. So um, more important than the ocean really is the love of uh, family and friends. Time with family and friends and loved ones. That's numero uno. Uh, music, my career, cycling, tennis, the ocean, all of those are Zen things for me. And uh, you find your Zen place and remember, surround yourself with a constants and light in life. Okay. Good night to Kathleen in New York City as well. Thanks, gang. We appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel. Glenn Scarpelli is going to be here. It's exclusive and we are super excited about that. He's a great guy. And we love having them here. Yes, she's ready to dance to our show theme. All right, the singers and orchestra, Jim Master singers and orchestra are all queued up for you. So get ready to dance. I'm going to have to skip tomorrow, driving to the Cape early Thursday. Can I fall asleep? Blah, 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 blah. Ah, so make sure you watch it in the archives. You're going to want that one. Willie is in bed watching. <laughs> we get very specific on this show. <laughs> all right, gang, we're going to wrap up. This is your. Uh, your friend on the air, Mr. Levity, as you've uh, deemed me. And uh, you take care. We'll be back tomorrow night with an amazing show with legendary actor, singer, the one and only Glenn Scarpelli. Good night, gang. You guys are truly a blessing. We love you. We toast you in our uh, jean mug with our hot chocolate that we're going to reheat. There you go. Huh ring that my father gave me, a mug that my mother made. Wow, are we family oriented or what? <laughs> Absolutely. Fam nothing tops family. All right, gang. More coming in. Slancha. Lovity hugs to all of you as well. Thanks for watching this episode of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Always a pleasure having you guys here from all around the world. Thanks for sharing the lovity. We will see you 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If you're here, if you're not, you can watch it in the archives at Gym Masters TV. You guys are a blessing. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us on the show. Love you all. Bye-bye.